Ramadan Picks. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to another episode of Ramadan Picks. In this episode, we'll be talking about developing our concentration, our khushur, our humility in our salah. And of course, this is a topic that the scholars, the laymen, people, Muslims have been discussing from the time of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is an important topic because if we realize that salah is the second pillar of Islam, that it is the first act of worship that people will be held accountable for on the day of judgment, then it is something that we need to pay careful attention to. And it is something that we need to make better and improve. And so in this episode, we'll talk about some ways and means and methods to improve our salah. From amongst these methods is that we learn how to recite the Quran properly and that we learn its meanings and we learn its tafsir. And this is something that is taken for granted in our times, but is something that is definitely important because when a Muslim recites Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, what exactly is he or she saying? And if we don't learn the meaning of the Quran, if we don't learn the meaning of all of the adhkar that we recite in our salah, then our salah will become a ritual, something that we do to finish, not something that deeply affects us, not something that brings us closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, merely Arabic formulas and rituals and, say and sayings that we say so that we can just finish this obligation. But salah is so much more than that. Salah is meant to keep us away from sinning, from that which will earn the displeasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So we need to understand what we are reciting and what we are saying in our salah. So that's the first tip. The second tip is to make sure that there are no distractions before we start to perform our salah. So we switch off our mobile phones. We focus on the fact that we are about to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, that we are going to stand in front of Allah and that we are going to worship Him and we are going to, hum uh, not humiliate, but humble ourselves. We are going to humble ourselves to Allah. We know that He sees us. He knows that He hears us. One of those indications that we, you know, that where that realization becomes apparent is when we come up from Ruku' and we say, Sami Allahu liman hamida. Allah hears those who praise Him and who glorify Him. And then we say, Rabbana walaka alhamd, that for you, our Lord, for you, our Master, there is praise. So this realization that you are communicating with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, you are fulfilling your purpose in life. That is going to cause you to perform your salah as if nothing else matters. And we hear these statements from amongst the salaf where they used to say that you should pray as if that salah is the last time that you will worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Imagine that. Imagine that just before you were about to pray, someone told you that this is going to be the last salah. You will not worship Allah again. How would you pray? Everything that you say, everything that you do in that salah is going to be done to the best of your ability with utmost concentration and humility. The third benefit or the third tip rather that we need to inculcate in our lives is to realize and to perfect the salah of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. That the salah be done in a manner which is slow, which is done with a measure of love where you're hoping for the reward of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, not something that you quickly go through. And we see this in the hadith of that man who the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam kept on sending back to perform his salah again. And at the end, he came and he said, Ya Rasulullah, that I don't know how to perform my salah better than this. So the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam taught him and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam showed him. And one of those things that I just want to take from that hadith is the fact that you develop a level of contentment, of serenity in your salah, so that it's not something that, you know, as one of my colleagues says, up, down, touch the ground and back to town. And what he means by that is a salah which is performed so quickly that the person does not even remember. How many times has this happened to you where you do not remember what you have recited in the first raka'ah or the second raka'ah after Surah Al-Fatiha. So salah needs to be done with a sense of contentment. And the final tip, and there are so many, my dear brothers and sisters, but the final one is that you need to realize that this salah is what you will be held accountable for firstly on the day of Qiyamah. This is the first thing that's going to be judged. So make sure that it's done to the best of your ability. 
and strive, strive wallahi to make sure that your salah is something that you will be proud of on the day of judgment. We ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to make us of those who are khashi'een, who have concentration and humility in their salah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept from me and from you. Jazakumullahu khairan. Please don't forget to share these videos and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reward you as the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam says that the one who shows others the path to good is like the people, will be like the people who are doing it. Barakallahu feekum. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu.